We all love tortillas. They allow us to have tortilla chips, burritos, fajitas, midnight quesadillas, obviously tacos. We're gonna show you how to make amazing, delicious flour tortillas at home that are better than anything you can get at the store. And believe it or not, the key to that is corn. We decided to take some of the things we love about a corn tortilla and bring them over. So I know it might not make a lot of sense using corn in a flour tortilla. Sounds a little nuts. But we're not just using any canned corn. We're using canned hominy. Hominy is actually maize that's gone through the nixtamalization process. That's a process of combining corn, water, and cow. Cow is calcium hydroxide or quicklime. What that does is it improves the hydration of the corn, the elasticity, and the nutritional value. So if you want to learn more about how you can do it at home, we have a lot of great guides on chefsteps.com. So we're going to use canned hominy so that we can kind of speed up this process. It's quick, easy, and we're going to bust these out in under 15 minutes. We're going to blend, mix, knead, portion, form, press, sear, eat. We got our corn. We got our flour, fat, leavening agent, baking powder, and then our flavor in umami, we have our chicken bouillon powder. If you don't want to use this, you can use salt. The reason why we want to use the full contents of the can is because the liquid inside of it actually has a lot of that great corn flavor, so we don't want to strain it and lose that. Ideally, you're looking for canned hominy that is actually fully cooked through. Some are kind of par-cooked um, with the intention of it being used in a pozole later, so if your corn isn't super tender, cook it a little bit more until there's no more bite in it. Here we go. Tons of technique there. So I like to start blending on low and gradually increasing the speed. Um, once we start getting a vortex, crank it up, and you only need to blend for about one minute. Sweet, that's it. Super smooth, liquidy. That's all you need. All right, here we go. Transfer it to a mixing bowl. This is our base. Now we're gonna add our fat to it, as well as our chicken bouillon powder. Again, you can add salt, smoke salt, go crazy. But for the fat though, we did lots of trials in the kitchen and we explored using palm oil, other types of shortening, lard, um, schmaltz. Um, all of these work. They're all gonna add slightly different flavors and slightly different textures, but we found butter was our favorite. It is actually important to add your chicken bouillon powder at this point. If you actually add it at the end or with the flour, it might be competing for that moisture content. Another reason why I like the chicken bouillon powder is because uh, it actually changes the color a little bit. Kind of corn tortilla-esque. Okay, we're gonna add our baking powder too. We decided to go with baking powder specifically because it has monocalcium phosphate. So that will activate the baking soda that's actually in the baking powder. Without that, it won't rise. Now we're gonna add our flour to it. It's actually pretty important the type of flour you're using. So if you use a cake flour, it'll be much too tender, almost biscuity. If you use a bread flour, it's gonna be too much protein, too much gluten, and it's gonna be a little bit chewy and you kind of lose that tenderness. So the sweet spot is right in the middle with AP flour or pastry flour. So this is one of many recipes on Chef Steps, part of our taco suite on how to make an amazing taco party from scratch. We have bulletproof carnitas, plant-based taco meat, making corn tortillas from scratch, and all the things that work and didn't work for us. All right, look at that. Don't worry if you have flour on the table, because we're going to be kneading. So let's get this out. All right, so now we're just going to do some simple kneading. So basically, we're just going to knead this until it gets nice and smooth, um, and it feels like all the flour has been hydrated. It should be very tender. Um, but it shouldn't be tacky. It shouldn't stick to your fingers when you touch it. Because if it sticks to your fingers, it's gonna stick to your tortilla press. <laughs> Even if you're gonna be using it now, or maybe in a couple days, it's really important that it's covered. 
If it's not covered, you're gonna develop a skin on the surface. Then when you go to press, you're gonna get a lot of cracks around the edges. Here we go. Cool. All right. Nothing about this has to be perfect, you know? But I just want them to be consistent. Ooh, okay, 60. Not looking good. 26, 33, doesn't matter. We portion, now let's form. So, no so specific. No science to this, just roll it into a ball. So you don't need to work super quick with this, but you don't want to take too long because they might dry out and create a skin. You know, you don't need to do this all by yourself. Make your friends do some work or your loved one. You may or may not have known, if you're a Studio Pass member, you get deals on all sorts of cool stuff. Like, you're watching all this great tortilla content, you might want tortilla tools. Right now, Studio Pass members get 15% off all Macienda stuff. Full tortilla press, amazing heirloom corn, giant, crazy, expensive masa grinder. Maybe you want one of those. If you're a Studio Pass member, you get 15% off, so go check it out. So before you start pressing your tortillas, it's important to have a plastic bag ready so that your dough doesn't stick to the press. So trim it to about the size you have here. So I like to trim the top of the zip bag, maybe about a quarter inch each side. So we still have the seam on the bottom. So we have our dough ready. We have our tortilla press. This is our favorite, it's from Macienda. Um, we have our bag ready so it doesn't stick, and then we have our pan at high heat right now. We're gonna be using cast iron, great at retaining heat, and so you can just kind of crank through these puppies. Once you press a tortilla, you need to start searing it, because you can't save those, because they're gonna start sticking together. So you're gonna have to press, sear, rinse, and repeat. Here we go. And do one at a time, right into the middle. Every tortilla press is a little bit different, so it might take a couple tries to get it dialed in. I like to press it most of the way, turn it 180, press a little bit more, and then you're good to go. Check that out, super thin. All right, dry pan, high heat, here we go. So what you should notice right off the bat when you add your tortilla to the high heat pan is you're gonna notice the leavening is activating right away. You're gonna get small blisters all around. Some of the steam is trapping, so you're gonna get bigger pockets of air. It's gonna help our blisters when we flip it over. Only gonna be about maybe 15, 20 seconds each side. So while one's cooking, you can always get the next one on deck. So let's get that pressed. Flip it over again. So that's what you're looking for. You're getting nice blisters, kind of a ring around the edge, nice kind of dark pockets. It's like just about burnt, but you don't want to eat them right now. So what you need to do is put them in your steamer. They're gonna hydrate a little bit more and they'll become pliable and elastic. But let's just keep making them, keep stacking it up. And by the time we're done on the last one, the ones on the bottom be ready and we can start eating. Cool, so that was our last one. Let's check out how some of our first ones are right now. Nice solid blisters all around it, you can see them. Um, you're even getting kind of a yellowish hue. Um, that's from the chicken bouillon powder. Let's check that out. Elastic, thin. The chicken doesn't hit you in the face. You actually get corn at the beginning, and the chicken and the umami kind of comes towards the end. So, has the flavor, has the texture, looks better. 
Why not just make these? Let this be the starting point for your taco tortilla journey. Everything from scratch, whether it's carnitas, plant-based taco meat, so many garnishes and fun things. It's taco time. <laughs>